Happy holidays and happy holidays to all the Lions fans out there because it is fun to talk a little Lions football. We do so now with the play-by-play voice of the Detroit Lions on the radio and, of course, sports director, Fox 2 Detroit. Uh, Dan Miller joins us now. Hey, Dan, how are you, my friend? Dapper Dan. What is up, guys? How you doing? Doing great. You know, Dan, we were talking uh, at the top of the show here today that a mock draft came out today, and we have not even talked about it yet. We are talking Lions football in December, and we're talking about the games that are being played. How much fun are you having right now? Oh, man, it's it, this is great. I mean, look, the difference between winning and losing when you do what I do is night and day. It's it's just you're energized. The people around you are energized. The fans are energized. It's a positive vibe all around the city. People feel good about it. So, you know, just contrast that to when they're losing and everybody's pissed off and everybody wants to tell you what's wrong with the team and everybody wants to tell you how to fix the team. And you know, you're the voice of the team, so that's part of the gig. But yeah. it's just, believe me, winning is the absolute best. It's It covers everything. And, and, and it just, it's when you've won five out of six, after starting one and six, it's two different worlds. And it feels like the way they're winning, Dan, too, the younger guys, how they're built, Jared Goff, young defense, uh, young offensive skill players, Everything about this feels like it's being done the right way. That's exciting, too. It feels like it's not just a season where they're winning. This thing could be long-lasting. You know what? I agree, and I'll take that a step further. The part I agree with is it feels like they're building a foundation. It feels like they're building something sustainable because they're doing this with a roster that only has one player over the age of 30. And a roster that is young players that are emerging that should be here for a while there's a lot of them are still on you know rookie contracts and will be for a couple years and and i'll take it a step further by saying you know it always felt like in the past when the lions were winning it was like man they were holding the door shut while the other guy was just trying to barge in and you were praying the clock would run out and they'd be able to win and then you say okay wipe your brow be done with it Man, this team, if you go back over the last three games, what they did to the Giants, to the Jags, and what they did to the Vikings, and then coming close against the Bills, put the Bills one aside for a second, and just remember they played toe-to-toe with them there. They're beating these teams. They're playing better than these teams. They're beating them in all three phases. And I think if you look at that, that's something we haven't seen from the Lions and, and, and a way of winning and making a statement at the same time that we haven't seen. Yo, Dan Miller, you are absolutely correct. And watch these Detroit Lions. You can believe in what they are now. And the, 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 the pundits and the analysts across the country, they believe in the Detroit Lions now because when you watch them, they're out physically teams. They're winning at the point of, the tra- of attack. They're winning the second half, Dan Campbell. They're winning the second half. We've never seen it happen. And now they're winning three games in a row. Uh, it looks extremely well. What are you looking for with this Jets game? Because going to this Jets game, I'll be there. I'm excited. I believe the Lions are for real. If they win this Jets game, I think they win the rest of the game. What do you need to see happen in this Jets game to really, really, really buy in? Well, look, you're on the road. Um, you know that's a tough place to play up there. The, we don't know what the wind's going to be. Uh, I'm seeing 10 to 15, but that place can swirl and it can make life difficult up there. They're expecting temperatures in the mid to high 30s. So, you know, it's a little bit different than playing inside of Ford Field, but they were just there. They played against the Giants. That wasn't exactly a beautiful day, and they Mm -hmm. found a way to get it done. So I think there's probably some confidence and familiarity and comfort when they go ahead and do that. So, look, to me, Braylon, the, the, the recipe doesn't change. They haven't lost the turnover battle in six games. Keep doing that. Big swing momentum have been going their way in these games. If you think back to the Jacksonville game, they got the early fumble, short field touchdown. Then if you think into this past week, stop on fourth down, short field touchdown. You got to make sure those momentum swings go your way, in particular on the road, because you don't want to get the that crowd into it or or, or get the Jets fired up. You got to, and that's what they've been doing for six weeks now. It's 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 become a familiar recipe. I think that's what they have to do. And to your original point about being more physical than teams, look, that's the plan. That's why you have three number one picks, a number three pick who's a pro bowler on that offensive line. That's why you have money that they've put into that defensive line, a second round pick in Pascal, first round pick in Hutch. You know, they've put assets into uh, that defensive line and offensive line because that's the way they feel like this team should be built. 
Now look, still need to see more out of that defense. Still need to see more pressure on the quarterback. Still need to see better play in the secondary. I think a healthy Okuda and a healthy Harris would certainly help that. But um, some of the things that, that they envisioned are now becoming the reality of the Lions. Dan Miller, the biggest two conversations that they've had this season with the Detroit Lions are one, Jared Goff, if he's the guy, and two, Dan Campbell, is he going to be the guy? You talked about Jared Goff last week, and look what you saw this week. Again, he is proven that he can be that guy under Ben Johnson's offense. So let's talk about the other guy, Dan Campbell. How has he improved in these last six, these last six weeks? I think stay in the course. I, I don't think he's changed. I think, you know, if, if look, Braylon, this is, this is what you did. If a coach in tough times starts flip-flopping and changing, you're not going to buy that no. because you're going to wonder who he is. Is he the guy that was preaching to us about what we were supposed to be doing when we were one and six? Or is he the guy that's preaching to us about how we're supposed to do things differently now because that didn't work? I don't think he changed. I think he's the same guy now that he was at the beginning of the year. Now, look, he's gaining experience in terms of some clock management things that people have given him grief for decisions the fourth down he didn't go for in Minnesota the third down he did throw on against Minnesota this time to Panay Sewell I think he's gaining experience look if you're not getting better at doing something with reps you're not doing it right so it's only fair to say he's getting better and I think we're seeing that but look his leadership qualities to me are what he the biggest strong suit that he has and those haven't changed and the players follow him the players love them. The players last year, this year, nobody has ever questioned that they play hard for him. It's a great place to start. And I think that, again, there, there's no question in my mind right now with what he's showing, he's absolutely the guy to lead this team. Dan Miller joins us, the voice of the Lions. Uh, Dan, I wanted to ask you about one of my favorite Lion teams was that 2014 Lion team that went to the playoffs uh, and got the game stolen from them in Dallas. Uh, this team is a team I'm falling in love with. And to look at their future next year with two number one picks, a couple of high other picks that they're going to have as well. Take those two teams, and I know we lost in Dominican Sioux off that 2014 team, but how does this team compare to that team going forward? Do you think this team can win a Super Bowl in the next three years? Look, that team in 2014 had a dominant defense. That team in 2014 had a top 10 defense since the merger against the run. And, then, and when you can do that, you can do a lot of things. And they were really good. Um, but a couple things about that team in 2014 in that game in Dallas. Yeah, the flag was brutal. But look, you jumped up 14-0 in that game, and then you basically stopped scoring. You had chances to get stops late against Dallas in that game, and your defense, which a lot of what you built around, didn't work. They had an offensive coordinator in Joe Lombardi who did not see eye-to-eye -eye with Matthew Stafford, and he was fired halfway through the next season. So I think there were some pieces that were there, but it just didn't all align and didn't all come together for them in 2014. But to your point, that's the best team that we have seen in Detroit since the teams the of the 90s. Yeah. yeah, so this team, look, can they win one of the next three years? Absolutely. If you keep building and ascending the way that, that this team is, and you're adding two number one picks, two number two picks uh, to this mix, and Jared Goff is, in fact, your guy. If Jared, the big piece to the puzzle is Goff. Yeah. If Goff can play like this, if Goff can be the guy, and you don't have to use your assets on, you know, these other quarterbacks or trading up or, or packaging picks. That's where you're really going to make some hay. And, and look, it, the way golf is played, if you're talking about replacing golf at this point, I don't know what you're looking at because who's better? Who are you going to go out and get and plug into this team that's better than Jared right now? Now, look, there's four games left. If he goes out there and, and falls apart, then people are going to start the conversation again. But look, the way he's played over the last six games, one interception, uh, top you know, of the league in terms of quarterbacks over the last six games, I think this guy's earned the right to be called the quarterback of the Detroit Lions. It may make mm -hmm. some people uncomfortable, but it really makes me uncomfortable if you start talking about drafting one of these rookies that I don't know that I have a lot of faith in and plugging him into a team that you think is ready to win now. Hey, Dan, last thing for you. Uh, just a thought on my guy, John Kaminsky. I love this guy. And ever since he's he's played eight games this year, the Lions are 6-2, and two, and they've lost those two games by a combined six points. What 
impact. I mean, his stats aren't going to jump off the page at you, but he impacts that defensive line a great deal, does he not? There's no question, and and it's funny. I sat down with him last week, and we talked about it. And you know, he's getting cut by Atlanta, and then eight teams, which is a massive number, putting in a waiver claim on him, and the Lions got him. And, and something just clicked when he came here. Number one, first and foremost, he was playing inside Atlanta, and they're letting him play a lot outside, and he feels much more comfortable there. He's a 280-pound guy, and he wasn't comfortable playing inside. So now he's outside. He's all hustle. Uh, he does get after the quarterback. He does impact the pass rush. And the most amazing thing, and this is why I talked to him about it last week, was when the Lions' pass rush faltered at the beginning of the year and slowed down, everybody was like, they need Kaminsky back, which is a crazy statement to make considering the guy was a waiver pickup back in, in May and June. Yeah. But it is true. He does impact that pass rush. And he's another option for Aaron Glenn to go along with Hutch and with Houston and with Pascal and with the different guys that they can plug in there. And the more guys you have that can get after a quarterback, the more guys that you can bring in with fresh legs, the better off you're going to be. And he's certainly one of them. But look, he and Isaiah Bugs are two guys that they basically pulled off the scrap heap and have become really big contributors to this defensive line. And, and look, they need to be better. So it just tells you where they'd be without them. But they have definitely carved out a role with this team with what they've done. All right, Dan, I know you don't pick games, but they got four left. What's the percentage chance they, they win out here? Better, Look, if better than 50%? They, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know. You're He's not, trying to pigeonhole you. Don't, 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 don't Is it 90%? Is it 90%? Don't fall for it, Dan. Dan, 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 Dan is it 90%? Dan, 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 is it 98.5%? <laughs> Look, if they play Don't fall the for way it. that they've been playing, they can win these next four games. There's no doubt about that. But So Dan Miller if, just said it's 100% that they're winning the next four games. <laughs> but, but the bottom line is this. They, they definitely dug themselves a massive hole early in the year by going one and six. And yep. now you've left yourself no wiggle room. So here's the thing. You can't have an off day. And teams in this league do have off days. That's what scares me a little bit. They got to be really good, really consistent, and, and play with a fine edge the rest of the way to get this thing done. This won't be easy. This is a really good team that has playoff thoughts of their own that they're playing against on, on Sunday in New York against the Jets. So, look, I love the recipe right now. I love what they're doing right now. But you have to continue to do that. There can't be any drop-off whatsoever. They started to, to, to mess around a little bit against Minnesota with all those penalties early in the game. Got to get away from that. That's what they haven't been doing. So just keep playing the way that you've been playing and you put yourself in the best possible chance to win. 98.5% chance they went out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dan, Let's thanks so ahead. much, man. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you next right, Tuesday. Dan, always a pleasure. Right, always thanks, a pleasure. Dan. Thank you. Uh, the great Dan Miller. Follow him on Twitter at Dan Miller Fox too. You, you only want them yeah. to win nine of their last ten games. That's all. <laughs> you, 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 right. you, can, you don't have any inkling that you two guys know each other when you when he's on. <laughs> Sight.